everyone. My name is Althea and I'm part of Boston Caribbean Fashion Week. Can't, we have a great session for you today. As a designer, do you have um, any idea of how to get in a boutique? Have you ever thought about what do I need to prep myself with um, for a boutique designer to consider my clothing line or my accessories? Well, we're in for a treat today. We have a great uh, discussion session that's going to be happening. We have two local boutique designers here in the Massachusetts area that are going to be speaking and giving tips about how designers can get into the stores. And then they're also going to be speaking about their experience um, dealing with COVID because in the retail world, it was a major impact that was going on. So my guest that I have with me today is uh, Tessie Sinflor. She is a designer and also a boutique owner and her um, Dima D. Moselle, am I saying that correctly? Yes, the Moselle. The Moselle, and she's located out in Worcester. And then also out in Avon, we have New Designs, um, New Destinies Fashion, sorry about that, New Destinies Fashion, and that's Rochelle Wilson Goggins. And for moderating this conversation, we have our own lovely uh, Cheryl, our VCFW event manager that's going to lead this beautiful conversation. So without further ado, I'm going to hand it over to Cheryl. This is all you. Have fun. Thank you. Thank you so much, Althea. And thank you, ladies, for being here with me and having this great discussion. I kind of want to start from backwards. I want to talk about the impact of COVID and what was the impact on your business? Tell me a little bit about that. Tessie, do you want to start? Sure. Well, first of all, thank you for having me. Um, it's a pleasure and an honor, actually, to be a part of this panel. Um, as far as COVID, so I am the owner of the Mazel Accessories and uh, designer of Corel Design, um, and we're located in Worcester. And um, when COVID, COVID first hit, it was like really a slap in the face because everything just shut down. Yeah. So we we're not ready for this, especially we just um, opened last August for the boutique. Mm -hmm. So um, it was a, like a, a big surprise, first of all. But um, at first, we shut down, you know, completely, just like everything else. Mm -hmm. And um, we reopened back in August. And um, ever since, it's been, you know, very slow. But meanwhile, while we were in quarantine, I still, you know, posted, you know, trying to advertise, mm -hmm. trying to keep, uh, you know, the consumers, like, you know, still interested, you know, knowing what we still sell and, like, just, mm -hmm. like, you know, just to keep them interested. And um, also, we're actually working because we didn't have um, a website. You know, I, I, I knew I wanted to go, you know, with the whole shopping online, even yeah. in the future, but I wanted to kind of, you know, because Worcester is like developing. So I really wanted to have like, because we're in like the downtown area, which mm -hmm. everything is growing. So mm -hmm. I really wanted to make everyone just come, you know, and shop and get to know everyone in the community. But, um, but I knew I, I had to eventually grow in the um, online shopping world the but, yeah, but yeah. definitely COVID definitely like pushed me really to really go mm -hmm. like I get online which we'll have on um, my launch next month for the my website so our customers can shop online mm -hmm. so um that's where it's been like it's been you know kind of slow but like the yeah. customers like you know everyone's not really like out shopping right now yeah, yeah. but um just you know, here and there, I send them, you know, little emails, mm -hmm. send them my new products, like on social media, like yeah. personally, like messaging them. So, you know, I think everyone is like kind of just basically in the coping zone right now. Yeah. So yeah. Just building the online traffic and that's yeah. how it's like building customers. And what yeah. about you, Michelle? How, what has been the impact and what, what did you have to, to do to even, you know, keep your business going? Well, um, like, like Tessie, you mm -hmm. know, it has slowed down um, considerably, and um, basically, I've cut back on my hours. I used to be open Wednesday through Saturday. Mm -hmm. um, so now I'm basically open Friday and, and Saturdays. Um, I've been staying on social media. Mm -hmm. um, you know, maybe jumping on and doing live videos and showing new items that um, come in and connecting with the you know the audience that way. Mm -hmm. um, and I have to say it, it absolutely works. Yeah. Um, I struggle with the online sales as well. I have a website, but um, I don't seem to get the traffic on the website like I would love to. Mm -hmm. so that's a, um, a challenge for me. And my intention is to actually um, invest some money and time into the website yeah. because certainly um, during the COVID, 
um, pandemic, people are home, so mm -hmm. they're on their phones, they're on their computers, and you know, they're certainly they're, they're shopping. Um, Amazon is definitely killing the game. So you know, and um, other online boutiques that are already well established in terms of having you know a wonderful um, established website. Wow. Mm -hmm. They've done very well, and so mm -hmm. I don't want to miss out on that piece because um, there is a, I mean, there's a large, very large audience out there that shops online. I, I mean, I'm guilty myself. I shop online. Yeah, um, yeah, we so, all do. Right, right. <laughs> That's our thing. Just go on the phone and press, and we're like, okay, we like this and send it. That's so it. My, yeah, my other, thank you so much. My other question to you, um, to you two, um, two ladies is, so if someone is looking to collaborate and I know that's a lot of things that I will have um, designers on here and students looking is there a way um, for them what would they have to do in order to get their um, their their items into both of your stores your stores you want to go first Tess <laughs> well me um, I actually reached out to um, local um, business owners you know because first of all like with the with COVID a mm -hmm. lot of people you know they really started like their own businesses, which is great, you know. Mm -hmm. So I reached out to a couple, you know, um, local business owner that I know, and like I literally like I posted videos like we're open. If you don't mm -hmm. want to advertise your business, if you want to put your product in, Good. you know, just feel free to contact us. You know, or I personally contact them. So. Mm -hmm. it's a, it's really good so i like i'm waiting on like doing the website so we can actually even including their um products on our website you know just like to collaborate and like mm -hmm. help each other out you know especially with like advertising it's like you come to the store hey like we i added eyelashes you know and it's like hey you're not just coming for the eyelashes but it's here or someone sent you there for the eyelashes so you get to see what we have so this yeah. is how you know to kind of expose each other mm -hmm. and a variety of yeah. items too yeah yeah about Rochelle? Uh, for me, um, I, would, I would love to collaborate with some local vendors and not have to wait for things to be shipped from California, New York, mm -hmm. and New Jersey. Um, mm -hmm. And I would say, you know, maybe, you know, reach out to someone like myself. I'm always um, open and flexible to make um, new acquaintances with um, people, local designers in particular, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. uh, I would like to um, obviously maybe see the items in person because I love um, quality items, you know, uh -huh. um, you can have, you know, I'll just say, I'll just put this out there. You, for example, you could have, you know, um, 500 pairs of shoes, um, yeah. but where did you purchase them from? Uh -huh. You know, I, I like a quality, but myself personally, I like a quality item, anything that's in the boutique, um, you know, and sometimes when you try a different vendor out and it's, it's your first time and then the item comes to uh -huh. your boutique and you unpack it, and sometimes it's such a letdown because yeah, it's different. Yeah, <laughs> you're it's like, totally different what from, is this? This is right. not a picture. This is not what I ordered. Right. <laughs> it's totally different from how it looked on the website or in the picture, yeah. and then you see yeah. it, and the quality is not there. I, I, I mean, I really uh, do not like that. Mm -hmm. I mean, it happened to me recently, mm -hmm. um, and so I'm like, oh my goodness. So um, I packed the, the the items are not even out of the package. Mm. They're not on the shelf because I'm embarrassed. You even put them on the shelf, it wasn't quality. The picture, oh my goodness, the picture was just like wonderful. Yeah, <laughs> but the product itself was not quality. Mm -hmm. So for me, you know, like I said, I'm open and flexible. With, you know, always um, looking to collaborate mm -hmm. with um, local designers again, and and it benefits mm -hmm. it benefits both the boutique owner as well as the the designer. I don't have to pay that shipping fee now if they mm -hmm. they can yeah. just drop the um, items off the yeah. inventory oh, yeah. on my doorstep. Yeah. yeah, So I'm very open to that, you know what I mean? Um, I'm not sure if you're familiar with um, uh, Lorenzo Designs, you know what I mean? I had a couple of pieces mm -hmm. with um, beautiful quality um, handcrafted handbags. Oh, and okay, okay. She's also a seamstress. So I've had um, a couple of her items mm -hmm. in my store. She's a local designer, as a matter of fact. I called her this afternoon. Mm -hmm. um, to just you know um, touch it and, and reconnect. So yeah, I have done that and it does work. Mm -hmm. So I think it's a um, absolutely fabulous you know opportunity to do it. Yeah. Definitely. And what advice? Because you know everyone wants to do it, and I'm sure you know fashion with us is our passion. We love to dress. 
what advice would you give everyone that's watching um, as far as starting your own business or starting specifically your own boutique? What advice would you guys give? I would say, go ahead. <laughs> I'm sorry, go ahead, sorry, sorry. Go ahead. Well, first I would advise like, you know, do your research mm -hmm. you know, because like the market is so like over kind of saturated right now because everyone, you know, is still, you know, kind of like the same thing, which is like, you know, that's fine. But like trying to get to know like your customers, you know, like what they like to really like kind of focus on their needs and um, trying to be different and creative at the same time, either incorporating like different ways, like the way you advertise or your values, you know, like in your, the way, you know, you know, the way you do business mm -hmm. and, um, because like, you can't just tell them, okay, someone already, someone's already doing that. So you can't mm -hmm. do it. You know, so it's just like, well, being yeah. creatively different in the way you basically run, run the business, even if 20,000 people are selling the same thing, you know? So that's, that would be my advice. Michelle? I agree. Um, as well, you have to find your own niche, uh, mm -hmm. and know your customer. Um, and what, what is it that you're going to do that's going to make you stand out um, mm -hmm. from the next boutique? You know, as Tess said, it's, it's oversaturated. Um, I'm in Avon. And um, next to me, there's a boutique in Randolph. There's um, a, a beautiful boutique in Stoughton. Mm -hmm. um, but I think we all um, bring different things to the table. What my customers um, typically like, uh, maybe another customer in another boutique doesn't like. You know what I mean? Um, so I think you have to find what your niche is. And, and so can I just tell you that with this COVID, it's yeah. really unique because so many people are working from home. Mm -hmm. so typically yeah. what I might purchase for the businesswoman, um, or maybe someone that goes to a lot of events or maybe someone that, um, typically, um, is looking for something to wear to church or whatever. I'm not necessarily buying that now because, mm -hmm. You know, some of the churches are comfort. Are They're looking for comfort, for like looking for different yes. clothes. Uh, yeah. Yes. So I've had to kind of change my whole, um, uh, you know, way of purchasing items, you know, mm -hmm. now because again, a lot of people are working from home so that they don't need to put that power suit on or they don't need necessarily a, a, a skirt and blouse or pants mm -hmm. or whatever. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. um, you do have to run out you know, maybe to go grocery shopping or, or to do an errand. So I have to change my whole mindset in terms of what I would normally purchase for inventory. So yeah, it's, it's, it can be a challenge, you know, because like she said, it, it is oversaturated. Um, but to me, I don't think you can never, never have enough boutiques. I mean, I go, I, I'm a boutique shopper. Yeah, I go to yeah. boutiques. Because <laughs> there's a lot of customers for, for something. Shop, yeah. You know? Yeah. So. So what is um so what, what what is the experience would you say that your customers are getting? What's your that you you make sure the items that you make sure that they, that you have for them? What do you you know what do you purchase purchase like specifically to the customer? Well, kind of what I have on I have on this um I like the blade. Yeah, <laughs> I like that. <laughs> um, and I have on um leggings. They look they they're leggings and they appear they almost look like leather pants, but they're mm -hmm. like that full leather stretchy. Yeah. Like those. Um, the, the tuna can be worn as a dress. Mm -hmm. I just happen to have leggings on, but I've seen some of my sisters rock it as a dress with boots. I mean, one of my customers had on six inch heels, killing it. I mean, just, <laughs> you know, Damn she had style. Her, oh my goodness. And she had her Afro and so just killing it. So this is very, um, it's very comfortable, but if you had to, if you had to jump on from, you know, hypothetically speaking, if you had to jump on the computer, um, yeah to attend a meeting for work, mm -hmm. you're comfortable, but mm -hmm. you're presentable at the same time. Yes. So different things, different pieces that they can mix and match with different things. Um, some some track suits, if you will, mm -hmm. track suits yeah. are big. Um, and the track suits are being worn with, again, heels. It's crazy. Yeah. You can yeah. put on the sneakers, but say if you want to just to be extra cute or extra sassy that day and you're running out, yeah, you put your tracksuit on and, and put your heels on and go. Mm -hmm. So yeah. I've had to, like I said, rethink. Don't get the, don't necessarily order the dressy stuff for a show because where are people going? Mm -hmm. You know, yeah. we're at home now, um, working from you know the house. And some of these children, some of the some of my customers' children are mm -hmm. home, being homeschooled. So yeah, it's it's a whole different ball game. This COVID nineteen has it's really changed. Mm -hmm. how, you know how we live, how we work, 
um, all of it. Yeah, and how we think. And what about you, Tessie, to that question? Um, for me, we have basically like limited like the quantity that we order, you know, usually order just like cutting it, literally cutting it by half because, you know, so kind of makes it interesting because, you know, once you see it and if it's not there, it's gone unless like you really want um, me to like um, special order it. Mm -hmm. And um, as for style, like, which was really interesting, I just went from like, yeah, that's really true. Like you can really like, you know, kind of make this like the stuff that you order to go with like our new lifestyle. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, I'm the type of shopper, like I see it, I like it, I'm still buying it with the hope that hey, COVID's not here forever. Mm -hmm. So like, hey, I might not be going anywhere and I'm dressed up, you know, just like kind of like psychologically, like, you know, I'm that type of shopper, like, like I feel good, like I look good, I feel good. So like we didn't change the styles really, but like mostly like the quantity that we order and um, pretty much it, but we still order the same stuff and just keeping the customers like with the same style that we have so they already know what they're gonna get and yeah that's pretty much it have you guys um i'm sorry has you have you guys added masks to your um sell, have, selling masks or anything that they need as for um for um, our current time now um no i haven't at first i when covid first hit i wanted to make masks you know design masks mm -hmm. to donate to the hospitals and i literally was i could not there was no elastic anywhere in the world because yeah, everyone, they were gone because <laughs> everyone was making yeah even nowhere to be found so i was like okay i'll just wait a little bit and by the time you know there was like elastic available like everywhere like you know, the grocery store they have mm -hmm. masks nail salon has masks so i'm like you know what like i don't i feel like it's unnecessary like for mm -hmm. me to not, like to add it because like you can literally get a mask anywhere the only way like i would like i do like refer like a mask like if i'm making like a an outfit like a, mm -hmm. a custom uh, um outfit for someone and yeah. i can see if you want like a nice um mask you know or i was thinking for bridal because we have a lot of bridal accessories so i'm like okay. yeah, something custom made mm -hmm. you know like be like for like a baby game or something yes mm -hmm. but not the regular ones no about Rochelle, have you added um, masks to your inventory? Um, I do have some masks. Okay. Yeah, they're um, they're blinged out, but yeah, I was, just, I was gonna say I didn't blinged out. <laughs> I was just gonna ask you because it looked like yeah, I, yeah, I have some masks that says six feet. Oh, oh I like that. It, it's all rhinestones. I might I might order some more. I was kind of reluctant, like oh god, I don't want to sell masks. Everybody, you know what I mean? But now, I mean, we need them, right? So I'm yeah, all we got we like stuff. um yeah. Mm -hmm. We're, 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 we're totally like still in the process of it um and we we have a long way to go that's so, right definitely and we and unfortunately we don't know what the winter months are going to bring you know mm -hmm. we don't know if there's going to be another you know outbreak and then we have to shut down again yeah. you know yeah. we, we have yeah. no idea of knowing that so that's true. that's true so to wrap up um just wanted you guys to give at least one sentence or something just to give an advice to someone that you know that's out here and wanting to have their own business successful business like you both ladies are mm -hmm. hello oh okay um, <laughs> so, that's it. I, I did hear you i would say um just do your research like i said do your research mm -hmm. get to know your customer and um go for it like hey we all had to try you know give it a try and yeah we discouraged because COVID's not here forever maybe you can use this time to actually learn you know what you know about the business and what kind of business you want to do and then by the time COVID is over because it will and you'll be ready to go so yeah michelle i would say you have to uh be persistent you know i came from the corporate world um mm -hmm. when you're an entrepreneur you know, when you're in the corporate world, you know every two weeks or every other week, you know what your paycheck is going to be, basically. Mm -hmm. When you step into this world of entrepreneurship, you're taking a huge um, leap of faith, if mm -hmm. you will, and you have no idea what you're going to make every week. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So you, you have to stick with it. You have to stick with it. You have to keep trying. Um, you know, some days you feel, you know, all super excited about it when you make you know some money and then you know there's some times where you may, may not make as much money but you, that's not the time to actually um give up and then don't be afraid to try 
um, different things. And I agree with Tess, definitely do your research, you know, and maybe if you can, uh, you know, if, if you can find someone that's kind enough to do that, find mm -hmm. someone that knows more than you, that's mm -hmm. already so from. been in the game mm -hmm. longer than you. Find someone that you can actually, you know, um, as a mentor, if you will, find a mentor if you possibly can, you know what I mean? And maybe if they are willing to share their knowledge and their experience, then that's great. Thank you. That was such great advice. And it was great to hear all the great information that you have about your, both your businesses. And I thank you ladies so much for being here. And thank you everyone for being here. And hopefully you got all the information that you needed and go for everything and push through. Thank you. Thanks, thanks for the opportunity. Thank, thank you for having me. Yes.